It's great guitar build off season. Stick around. Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of Home Built Workshop. I hope you are all doing awesome. I'd like to introduce to you my freestyle entry for the 2022 Greg Guitar Build-Off. The freestyle category is sort of where you get to have some fun, be creative, do some different things than what you might normally expect, and that's what we're gonna do today. Now my plan for this build is to use this cigar box. We'll end up making some blocking that goes in here, basically kind of turning this into a solid body with a bolt-on neck. I need to first create the neck, that way we can get the final dimensions to create sort of a tongue that sticks out here where the neck will bolt on and then we'll have some blocking and things going on inside here to attach the bridge and other hardware. And to make the neck, I'm gonna use this slab of elm. I think this is gonna work really good. This is a piece that I milled myself from a log using my chainsaw mill. It's perfectly quarter sawn as long as we rip this center section out of here. We'll get some really nice quarter sawn pieces. I think it's gonna make for an awesome neck. I'm also gonna to try to make all of the blocking and all of the wood will hopefully be from this elm. So I think our first operation is going to be to lop a section of this off. That way it's a lot easier to manage and we can begin getting our quarter sawn strips for the neck out of this thing. I think we need a new blade. <laughs> well, you can really see the quarter sawing. I'm gonna use a hand plane to roughly joint one edge. This will be the side that I'm gonna pass along the fence on my bandsaw. With the live edge removed, now I can rip the piece down into two roughly one inch strips. After a couple quick passes through the drum sander, I'll have this piece down to exactly three quarters of an inch thick. Now using my favorite double-sided tape, I'll attach my template to my new neck blank. I'm gonna extend the side lines of my neck down to the end of my piece because I don't wanna round it off like a typical neck is. You'll see later, it'll make more sense. And it's back to the bandsaw to remove as much of the waste material as I can. I've had some people call me crazy for doing this operation with my template attached, but I have found that it actually helps me to cut more accurately and carefully. I don't tend to get in a hurry as much because I don't wanna risk damaging the template. And if I do accidentally damage the template, I never work off the master. You guys have heard me say that before. Always make a copy of your main templates. So here's my rough neck blank. Now you probably are wondering why I didn't cut or route this flush down at the end of the neck. That was actually intentional because I wanna be able to cut this off nice and square so that I don't have these rounded corners. I want this thing to sit nice and square against the cigar box. Using my template as a saw guide, I'll use a flush cutting saw to cut that off nice and square. We'll clean up the edges a little bit later on. Before I remove the template, I'll drill some small pilot holes for the tuners. Whoa! <laughs> Did you see that? Are you okay, template? You're all right. Sorry, didn't mean to throw you around. Before I get too much farther on this neck, I wanna create the, I guess we'll call it a neck pocket, that's going to allow this neck 
to bolt into place. To make that piece, I'm gonna use the other half of the slab that we made the neck from. So I'm gonna cut down a piece that's the exact width of the finished neck, and then we'll notch it and set it into this box. Now we have our block which is going to attach the neck. I've cleaned up the sides on the drum sander and brought it to the exact dimension. It's exactly the same width as the heel of my neck. Now I need to transfer these measurements along the center line of this box so that I can cut out a notch to allow that block to sit inside the cigar box. how well you can tell this piece fits really good but it doesn't sit flush with the bottom of this particular cigar box there's a small lip on the bottom as well as here on the top I need to make some notches in this block so that it will sit down flat then I'll worry about getting the final thickness of this block so that the lid sits exactly flush down on this block I'm using a series of stop blocks on my table saw sled to make this notch exactly in the right spot so now that notch will allow this block to sit right down over the edge of the cigar box. Now I'm gonna keep this exact same setup on the table saw and I'm gonna cut a notch that's going to be even with the top piece and that will allow the lid to close once we have this down to its final thickness. With the notches created to fit the cigar box, I've adjusted my stop blocks accordingly, and now I'm going to nibble away at the material to create what will become the neck pocket. So right now we've got a really wonky looking block of wood here, but that is where our neck's gonna attach. That's the groove that will accept this little piece on the top. Now I just need to take this block down to thickness so that it's just above the surface of this box. I want it to be just tall enough that the top rests 100% firm on the top of it. I'm gonna do that on the drum sander, but you guys have seen me do that before, so I'll spare you the details. We'll be right back with hopefully this box closing. Perfect. Now I'm gonna rip down a couple more strips that I'm gonna glue on here, sort of as little mini wings, just to widen this out and give some more surface when I attach the bridge. To glue these wings on, I'm going to use mostly regular wood glue, but I am going to leave one small spot on each piece where I can apply some CA glue. The CA glue is going to help act like a clamp and keep the pieces from shifting around as I apply clamping pressure. And bam, just like that, through the magic of television, we now have 
the center block to the right dimensions fits really well. I think we're now far enough along here that we can move back to the neck and get that finished up. And the first thing I'm gonna do there is finish dimensioning the heel end to get it nice and square so that it follows the exact same taper as the rest of the neck. This is gonna be easily accomplished using a sharp hand plane and my shooting board. I'm gonna carefully measure out and mark a center line on the neck. Of course, this is gonna be used for routing the truss rod channels and for alignment purposes of the fretboard later. I'm using my super simple truss rod channel routing jig. It's just a piece of plywood made to fit the base plate on my router. I stick it in place on the center line and route the truss rod to the proper depth. I'm also going to use this jig shifted to the side to route the channels for the carbon fiber reinforcing rods. With the carbon fiber rods and the truss rod both fitting very nice, now we need to make us a fretboard. I'm going to make one out of some mahogany. Mahogany? Not mahogany. Rosewood. Looks like a couple of rosewood acoustic guitar bridge blanks to me. I'll set that aside. Now I have the fretboard blank roughly to size. Now it's time to cut some fret slots in there. We're just gonna use the old fret slotting miter box to make a whole lot of cuts. I'm ready to start cutting fret slots, but let's do this time-lapse style. While I had great expectations going into this time-lapse, Apparently, I didn't have the GoPro set correctly, and I got a bunch of nasty flicker from the lights. Sorry about that. Just know that, well, my intentions were good. And there is our slotted fretboard. I need to make sure I have a good center line marked on my fretboard. And now, I believe we are ready, so let's glue this. There it is. Once the glue is dried, it's back over to the bandsaw to trim away the excess fretboard material. Then I'll fire up the router again and route it perfectly flush with the edge of my neck. To lay out for the fretboard markers, I'm gonna draw diagonals between each fret slot to locate the center of the fretboard where I can drill quarter inch holes. Now to fill these fretboard marker holes, there's about a bazillion different things you could do, glue in some dowels, some little mother of pearl dots, or any number of other things. I'm gonna do something a little bit different and something I've kind of been having some fun with lately. I've got some teeny tiny pieces of copper tubing that I'm gonna glue into the fretboard marker, and then we're gonna fill that center of the tube using some crushed seashells. This is something that I've been playing around with and I really like the look of this and I think it's gonna look really nice on this neck. First, we'll give the copper tube a little tappy tap to knock it into place. I'll make sure it's seated with a wooden block. And now begins the somewhat tedious process of filling each copper tube with the crushed seashells. I use a pair of tweezers for this step because I can choose the size of the seashell that fills the marker. If I get too many large pieces, it doesn't really fill it very well, and too many small pieces, and it just fills it and it looks like a white dot. By using a mixture of different sizes, it gives it kind of a cool random look once it's all sealed up. Now I'm gonna use some water thin super glue 
and a whip tip. The tip is very important because especially with the water thin stuff, it can gush out and spill all over everything. This gives you a lot more control. We're just gonna fill that brass tube with CA glue. Now some of that is going to wick down and around it, help hold the brass tube in place, but it's also gonna seal the seashells all in place as well. With the tube and seashells well soaked in CA glue, now it's really important to let this dry naturally. You don't want to use any accelerator here. That can cause it to foam up and bubble and really look bad. Let it dry naturally. I'm going to let this dry overnight. That way I know it's good and cured before leveling this off. And when we level this off, we're going to reveal the coolness that will be left with the brass tube and seashell inlays. There's our cool seashell inlays surrounded by a little thin ring of copper. The copper has a little shine to it when the light hits it. It looks really cool. Plus you can see all the individual pieces of seashell in there, which I think looks really neat. Well, with that step out of the way, now we can focus on getting this headstock shaped. First, I need to reduce the thickness of the headstock and create the transition that leads up to the end of the fretboard. Then we'll route the relief in here and add the Haley logo. It's officially a Haley. Next up is to install some frets. A lot of people have different methods for installing frets and really whether you do it by hand or you use a fret press, none of those methods are really right or wrong. I like to use a combination of those two. My current process is to lightly seat the fret with a hammer, trim it to length, and then when I get all of the frets roughly started in the neck, I'll use my fret press and press them all home. I don't know about you guys, but I always slice myself two or three times at least on the sharp fret ends. To get rid of those fret ends, I use a homemade 90 degree fret end file. It makes quick work of the sharp fret ends and files everything nice and flush with the edge of the fretboard. Once they're all flushed up, I switch over to an angled file and file the bevel on the end of the fret. To glue in the side dots, I'm just going to use some thick CA glue. Now there's about a bazillion different kinds out there, but the one that I personally like to use is made by Starbond. If you guys haven't heard of them, you should really check them out. Link down below in the description. And just as I did on the seashell fret marker dots, I'm gonna wait for this glue to dry naturally. I'm not gonna use any accelerator. I don't want anything to bubble and fizz or any of that kind of goofy stuff. But just let it dry naturally, you get better results that way. Once the CA glue is dry, I'll trim the side dots flush using a chisel. And then it's back over to the old drill press to drill out the tuner holes. I'm using a special step drill bit that's made specifically for drilling tuner holes. 
I'm using 10 millimeter tuners, so this is a 10 millimeter bit. With most of the work done on the neck, I'm going to shift my focus back to the body. First, I need to attach the cigar box to the hardwood insert. I'll mark out the locations for these screws and drill pilot holes at the drill press. Now I believe I'm at a point where I can attach the neck to the body. We've got to drill some holes on here. To get everything lined up, I'm going to use the neck plate as the template. I've got a little piece of double-sided tape on the back. I'm just going to stick it in place, make sure it's nice and square, and then we can drill some pilot holes. Oh no, I got fingerprints on it. To mark the location of the holes on the neck, I'll lightly clamp the neck into place and use the tip of a drill bit to mark the locations through the holes into the neck. Well, that's about enough screwing around. Let's install the bridge. The bridge that I'm gonna be using is this Schaller 3D bridge. It's a top-loading bridge that's super adjustable for string spacing, as well as height and intonation. I really like this bridge. We just need to locate it in the proper spot on this cigar box. Now, normally when I'm building a solid body electric, I have a center line of the body to work off of, and that really helps with locating all of the holes for the components. In this case, we don't really have a center line to go off of, so we need to determine the exact location for this bridge. I'll begin by putting some painter's tape on the top of the box. This is so I can make some pencil marks on it. Then I'll grab this crazy contraption, which is really just a couple of yardsticks that are gonna act as a straight edge. You line them up along the edge of the neck and it projects that same line down across the body. From there, I can just measure in between those lines and I'm gonna get a line that's equal to the center line of the neck. Now I can just measure down from the nut slot to get the location of the bridge. So now having that mark, that is the location of the middle screw hole on the bridge. If I line that up right there, I see my mark down through the hole. That's where the bridge is going to live. Of course, we need to make sure it's square this way. But once I get that center hole drilled, then we can adjust it, make sure it's measured nice and square, and we're good. While I'm at it, I'm going to mark out the location of the pickup as well. I'm going to try to center it right on that foil pattern that's on the box. I think it's gonna fit pretty good right in the middle. And it's time to route out the pickup cavity. Oh. 
So now I think I've got everything done, all the drilling, cutting, any machining that needs to happen, except for shaping the neck. The reason that I decided to wait to shape the neck and the heel is really just to make sure that I had everything in place and I didn't need to make any more final adjustments to maybe the angle or anything like that. That way I can get everything fitting properly, knowing where everything's gonna live. So now I'm gonna take this thing all back apart and we're gonna shape this neck. Shinto time. In the middle of shaping the neck, I was looking at the fretboard markers and something just didn't look right. After taking a few measurements, I found that there was a couple of them that just weren't quite in line with the others and it looked a little weird. I decided I better repair that. So I remarked the locations and then went back over to the drill press to carefully drill each of those fretboard markers out. In order to fix the misalignment, I had to drill these holes the next size larger so I couldn't use the same fretboard marker material. I ended up using a mosaic pin made for knife making. This little error turned out to be a huge improvement on the look of this guitar. The brass on these side marker dots match the inlays on the top of the fretboard and it looks awesome. So there it is. Sometimes a mistake is an opportunity to improve your project. Well, these markers look way better than the last ones. I'm really glad, even though it was terrifying, that I decided to redo that and make an improvement. Sometimes that's what we have to do. When you make a mistake, you just gotta figure out how to move forward, repair that mistake. Most cases, you're gonna make it better and move on. Now, we're gonna move on and get some sanding done so we can apply a finish. Shake well before using. Pro tip, make you a little block to put your finish in. That way it's less prone to knocking over. Ask me how I learned that. Since I really like the look of Elm with just an oil finish, I'm keeping it super simple and just using a guitar finishing oil to finish these pieces. It is time for final assembly, but first, we need to make this thing official. There it is. Now I'll just begin what will hopefully be the final assembly. First, I'll secure the insert to the cigar box. Then I can bolt the neck into place And I'll begin adding all the hardware, starting with the tuners. There's something highly satisfying about the tape pull after polishing frets. After the final assembly and a little bit of setup work, this thing is ready to go. A couple of the specs, just so you know what we have going on for hardware here. We've got Godo tuners. We've got a Seymour Duncan Seth Lover PAF humbucker, shallow bridge. We've got a CTS push-pull pot so we can get some coil splitting going on here. We've got a rosewood fretboard, of course an elm neck. This thing turned out awesome. It is now time to see how it sounds. I'm gonna head over to my buddy Jesse's house. You guys have seen him before in other videos. He's gonna give this thing a rundown and we're gonna check out how it sounds.
Huge shout out to my buddy Jesse for demoing these instruments. Most of the time I've got someone else doing it because I'm a lefty and most of my builds are righties so kind of hard for me to do it upside down and backwards and all that kind of stuff. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this build. This thing turned out great. I couldn't be happier with the results. I'm going to get this posted up on the Haley Guitars website. If you guys want some more information, check out HaleyGuitars.com. You can see this as well as other builds that I have going on over there. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Uh -huh.